Seven Emu is an indigenous-owned cattle station and wildlife reserve on the Gulf of Carpentaria in the Northern Territory of Australia. The 888 square miles of bushland is refuge to countless species of flora and fauna, including native sugarbag bees. I'm Frank Shadford from Seven Emu Station. I was born and raised here on Seven Emu, and I think I would be the last indigenous on that hunt and gathered food, because I'm 63 now. Uh, not the last, but in this area anyway. My mother, not only my mother, but big mob of other old people. We used to hunt and gather for food. A lot of the things she used to tell me, like if you don't hunt or gather the food, a lot of the food will go off. In other words, she used to tell me it'll go julwa. Julwa means sour. And one of the biggest problems we're facing now is the native bee. I see the male bees die. Well, well, it's not there no more. So he lives way up, about six metres up. And the female, she lives below. And I seem to think a lot of the ground flower and butterfly, they're not even there. Because of the female not pollinating the tree properly. And the bottom, you know, flowers and stuff. If you look at the river system, the river system here, the flying fox come up that river four times a year, pollinating. And the gum trees, they pollinate, they have flowers now. And they don't have flowers no more. Flying fox, he pollinate at six in the afternoon, he start at six in the afternoon, till six in the morning he goes back. What happened when he fly back six o'clock in the morning, the birds come into them flowers and pollinate. Then at seven, it's a male bee come around and pollinate. So it's a cycle. Then you've got butterflies and all that other little insects pollinating. But now you don't see that no more. 90% of flowering plant species are dependent on insect pollination. However, over 40% of the world's insect species, including bees, are faced with extinction in the coming decades. According to a study in the Journal of Biological Conservation, 25% of eucalypt species, most of which are found in Australia, are also threatened with extinction, according to the International Union for Conservation of Nature. A Center for Biological Diversity landmark report also found that hundreds of native bee species are facing extinction. Or well, even the parrots, you know the parrots, the lorikeet? Well, they should be squealing everywhere. There's a bird we call gulbogu. Now that word is a gulbogu, he's a bird that lives up in a, you know, taking honey, nectar and that. You don't see that bird no more. And that disappeared in the last five years, ten years. Shadforth says he's witnessed feral European honeybees attack and kill male native sugarbag bees. He also says European bees don't pollinate properly. And what happened, he goes around and uh, pollinating the tree, but he takes too much off that tree. Whereas with the old Aborigine bee or the native bee, you see what he's doing? He share with all the bird and insect and the flying fox. See the flying fox, how many flying fox fly up at night? A couple of million? So he pollinate all that area, that tree, within five mile radius. To me, this country is getting off balance pretty quick. And, and you, you look at the flying fox, you go to town, you hear people whinging about the bats are in town. Well, they don't know why they're in town, because the reason they're in town because they can't get anything outside. You know, we're not looking after the land, and you've got to look after the land to make it cycle properly. People, you know, that are in power are ignoring the indigenous side of, you know, knowledge of the land. And they, well, they only look at it for their, for the money-making thing. They're not looking at it as a long-term thing. They only got four years as a politician. They're going to make so much, die within 20 years or 30 years. They don't worry. So they say they're going to look after the next generation. Well, I can't see where they're going to look after the next generation, the way things are going.